Welcome to another episode of The Profile. My name is Gary Dunn and I'm your host. On this show, we typically find out something we don't already know about our guest. And our guest this week was born in England, plays a mean harmonica, loves blues and soul music. He's a dad, he's a granddad. He's just an all round essentially nice guy. So this week on the couch, or the chair, is none other than Richard Roberts. Welcome, Richard, to the show. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Gary. How are you tonight? All right? I'm good, yeah. Look, uh, Richard, I'll just set this up a bit. I'm just going to ask you a few questions and uh, okay. just get a bit of an insight into your life and your career. Okay. And um, I'll start with this one. Where were you born? I was born in Norwich in England, but I uh, didn't live there. We shifted down to Horsham in Sussex. Uh, lived there till I was about 14. Emigrated to New Zealand in 62, and that's where I started doing my musical career in New Zealand. So, And left there in 71, in the 70s in London, trying to catch up on the swing in 60s, which had already gone. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by that much. And, uh, and then back and moved to Perth in 81. So. Okay, well, I mentioned you played harmonica, but... What other instruments do you play? I play guitar, rhythm guitar, really, a bit of lead when I'm soloing, but uh, playing solo, that is, and um, main vocals singer. I'm a singer, yeah. That was my next question. You just took it away from me. Oh. What is your main instrument? Yes, my main instrument is in there, the larynx here. Yeah. Yep, and, and you're bloody good at it, mate. And, Thank um, you very much, Gary. So what was the turning point in your life? I know you obviously went to New Zealand and that's what kicked it off, but what was the crux of, of you seeing someone or... Yeah, well, I, I guess it's a, it's a, it was a new era, I guess, and, and when we were kids, it was Elvis, Shadows, to the Beatles, to the Stones, and in New Zealand, I went to school with a guy called John Olsen and his brother was Derek, and they had a band, like a Beatles band, don't tell me they're called the Olsen Brothers. No, no, they weren't. Oh, they were oh. called the Beat Benders. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> close. <laughs> and uh, close. they introduced me. They wanted me to, you know, they let me sing and thought that was the way to go for me. And I became a singer and I had a, formed a band called the Troubled Minds in Napier. And in that was about 66. We decided to go and make the big time in Auckland. So we all packed our little cars up and drove off to Auckland yep. and uh, we got in, in the scene there and we did quite well actually, yeah, it was good for a few years, the band. Take me into more about Troubled Minds. What? Well, the Troubled Mind, actually the name comes from, uh, oh gosh, <coughs> Derek Olson, it was his idea to call it the Troubled Minds. Uh, I think it was an old blues song, Troubled in Mind okay. and, uh, um, and it was just a five-piece band doing R&B, yep. English R&B, because it was very hard to get um, the original records in New Zealand back yep. then, um, well, especially in Hawke's Bay, Napier, and uh, so we we just uh, got all the, like them and animals and the stones, and we just did all that, that yep. and the kinks, things like that. So off those are very the... early albums, which were all based on American R&B artists, of mm. course. Um, so when we got to Auckland, we had a you know much better um, accessibility to records and, and yeah. then the soul thing really broke you know the Otis and Motown yeah. and all that so and Sam Cooke of course era. was always around so, wonderful yeah wonderful era yeah so um, first concert you went to first concert I went to was in 1965 at the Auckland Town Hall uh, the Rolling Stones and they were supported by Ray Columbus and the Invaders which are a really great New Zealand band. And Roy Orbison, <laughs> funny. And what a voice! Yeah, what well, a he voice! Was incredible. But of course, all the screaming girls—you couldn't hear too yeah. much. But the Stones were just magic. Yeah. And uh, that, and we we were living in Napier then, and Derek Olsen, and we drove up to Auckland to see the show, and uh, that was a turning point. That's it. That's it for me. That's, it. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, what was the last concert you went to? Last concert uh, was Brian Wilson's Pet Sounds tour, All right. which is uh, it's quite funny because um, the very first album I bought was um, Surfer Girl by the Beach Boys. Was that at Cottesloe Beach, that one, or was 
<laughs> I don't think so. Okay. No. This was before they um, tore down. Oh, yeah, I think before they tore down. Under, yeah, so. yeah. And um, what was the first single you bought as, as a youngster? Well, the first single I bought was in England, um, and it was The Ballad of Davy Crockett. You remember it well. <laughs> I do you? I just hated that song. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I loved it. And I played it and played it for a couple of weeks, and then my sister, my older sister, who was a young teenager, then sat on it and broke it because it was 78. <laughs> it was a, and so I went out straight away, and, and with the money that she had to pay for breaking sit on my record, um, I bought Razzle Dazzle by Bill Haley. Oh. And, uh, Bonus. Yeah. It was a bit better. 78s, than, yeah. A bit better than David Crockett, but anyway. <laughs> what was the first album you bought? The first album was, I mentioned before, was the Beach Boys' Surfer Girl. Yeah. Um, I would have bought the Stones, but back then, you know, back in the 60s, it was, money was just so hard to come by. I was still at school, and a friend of mine had the, the very first Rolling Stones album. Yeah. And um, he lent it to me, and I'm not sure if I gave it back. That might yeah. be it sitting up there. I'm not sure, quite sure. I'm sorry I keep asking you questions after you've answered them, <laughs> but the producer just wants me to ask these questions, OK? Yes. OK, um, the last album you bought? The last album I bought, gee, I think it was the... I bought a CD, and it was an, an album I used to have where, uh, when a young lad. It was the Wilson Pickett, the Wicked, or the exciting Wilson Pickett, and I bought that CD, but that's quite a while ago. Now, a few couple of years ago, yeah. I bought that. We, uh, has that got the same arrangement on that we do um, in the pub legends, the, the song we do? No, 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 no. Land of a Thousand Dancers? Um, well, it's pretty close, it's yeah. Pretty close. I wish I could sing like Wilson, but... That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the arrangement. Okay, just some other jobs you've had throughout your life apart from music. Well, I've been lucky enough really to be able to sing all my life. I've, yeah. That, when I first left school, I worked for a company in Napier called Dalgetty, Dalgetty New Zealand Loan, and that was maybe one or two years just an office and mm. merchandise store, things like that. Very lucky because yeah, we've all had yeah. to supplement. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I've been very, very and... fortunate. I think, you know, being a singer, you can, I don't know, or should I say, you can, get, you can make a living, you, and I've been able to, yeah. yeah. So, on the way here in your car, who, do you, who are you listening to? Who do you typically listen to? At more? Well, I, I, I don't listen to a lot of radio, and um, I usually listen to, the, to my vocal exercises before I go to a gig, so I have Seth Riggs street-level right. singing. Yeah. And uh, and but Bob Patient was telling me we were talking about the radio and uh, Bob, you know, Perth, very well known keyboard yes. player, said, uh, you, should, you know, put Nunga Radio, it's fantastic, and uh, I put it on, and it is, I really enjoyed it, ah. one hundred point nine. What are they playing? Uh, Everything. Right. Yeah. It was uh, it's just not sort of typical radio format. Yes. So I really enjoyed it, and it's just different things. I think they've what's like, they had a Motown thing on this evening, uh, just before I got here, but. Uh, and then some, there was the Rascal was doing good loving, yeah. and, you know, things yeah. that don't get played a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's different. Um, okay, if you were stuck on a deserted island, you had a little bit of time just before you knew you were going to be there, what album would you take? What album would you listen to? I would take, well, it was a very close call between the two albums by Little Feet, and it's Time Loves a Hero. You can only take one. You Okay, well, it was a double. It came. I think it came out later <laughs> okay. as a double album, but <laughs> <laughs> but the first time loves a hero. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, it's my favourite. But yeah. there's so many. I mean, yeah, great album too. Yeah, yeah. and um, you've been in Perth for a long time. Obviously, what would be the best Perth band you saw live? Well, um, you know yourself, Gary. When you're playing, you don't get out to see many yep. bands. And um, I, I, the band I saw that really took me was uh, Never Never. Yeah. Um, don't ask me all the members. I know Gus was the drummer, but I can't remember all the members. Warbo, yeah. yeah, they had it. What I, what really attracted me to them was they had a really good vocal sound. Yeah. And being a singer, you you know you appreciate that because yeah. often you go to see an act and the singer gets yeah. the bass drum or the bass is over the top yeah. and you can't hear them properly. But I was very impressed with this, the this, the vocals and um, it was actually when the Fonzarellis first started and we. Uh, I said to the management there that I'd seen this band, they got really good vocals. And then 
lo and behold, a few weeks later, we turned up with their sound guy, <laughs> <laughs> which is really good because uh, apparently he mixed from the vocals down, yeah. which I quite like that yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. um, what Perth bands have you played? I know you played in a lot. Yeah. Um, can you run us through some of those? And Started uh, with um, Jump Street, which um, that lasted. we did the morning session at the Scarborough Beach Hotel, which was fantastic. Yeah. 11 o'clock start, I think it was. 11 to 2 or two, something. And then the yeah. afternoon was 4.30 to 7.30. OK. I only played the morning ones. <laughs> we, we did both did of them at times. Oh, yeah. right. OK. Yeah. yeah uh, what band was that? A band called Passport. Oh, OK. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember who's in that myself. <laughs> Too much scotch, I think, through my life. <laughs> but um, And with that band, there was a, um, Jim Fraser, who I played with throughout my career in yeah. Perth. Um, he was in the Fonzies with us and yes. I often worked duo work. He was a keyboard. Yeah, guy, keyboard, sax, it? flute, yeah. yeah. Very talented. Yeah. And um, after that, well, gosh, Jump Street, probably the Fonzarellis, the Flying Fonzarellis, which was uh, probably the most successful. Yeah. Um, You've done a lot with the Blues Club, haven't you? Like yeah, Charles I was in the house and, band for the yeah. Blues Club for a couple of years and I've been a member, of, you know, yeah. over the years, ever since, gosh, it's now 20, I don't know, I'm going to say 21, it's probably 25 years ago since it started. Did you bring your sonnies in with you? Because I can remember you doing the Perth uh, Blues Brothers. I haven't sure. got them in my pocket, um, unfortunately. They're in my bag somewhere. But um, yeah, the Fonzies was always the glasses, Alpha and I. Yeah. It was based basically, I think, we um, on Animal House, the movie. It was just yes. a fun band and we yeah. did all, and all those songs, which was great, and the Blues Brothers were all my... Songs that I loved in the 60s, yes. <laughs> even though we were doing them in the 80s, yeah. which was fantastic for me. It was great fun. Moving a bit sideways, what was your favourite TV show growing up? Growing up, um, well, in England, when I was before we went to New Zealand, we had two stations, um, and it was Oh Boy and Six Five Special. And we're talking Six very late 50s, special. yeah. And uh, that had Cliff and all those sort yeah. of people on it. And any reruns of the Marx Brothers or Fred Astaire, I loved all that. Fantastic. And uh, but when we went to New Zealand, Gri um, the Andy Griffith Show. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Don Knotts and yeah. Takes you back. Yeah. So Maybury. <laughs> what is Blueberry Pie? Sorry, <laughs> yes. reminiscing. Pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what does the future hold for you, Richard? Well, I guess I just um, the future holds more fun times with my family and friends yeah. and hopefully I can continue playing with some very fine musicians yeah. um, which I have done all the time in Perth it's been great you're People. playing with some fine ones now I, I know yeah. and you're one of them and Steve and Al Thank and you. everybody and all the guys have you seen Al lately um, Al are you talking about Al Simpson? Massey or no, Al, Al Fonzarelli or oh, Al Simpson oh the drummer yeah oh vaguely uh, yeah. <laughs> catch up with him He's organising all this. Is he? Okay. <laughs> um, Thankfully. Do you, do you collect anything? Do I collect anything? Um, it, only song lines. I, I, you know, write song lines. Yeah. For one day I'll write, a, write songs, more songs. I have written a few in the past, but that's my, about the only thing, I, if you can count that as collecting. Yeah. And I've got diaries, which I have to... Uh, put down onto the, uh, onto cool. the hard drive now, the lines of this, that and the other. And what does that mean? <laughs> well, uh, Wayne pride in, um, and he collects little soldiers and they used to be big soldiers, but they're getting <laughs> like smaller. And I thought that was quite interesting, but. Um, Why is that? Why are they getting? I don't know. I, oh, I, I okay. forgot to ask him. <laughs> I got in trouble off the producer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, you brought this little beauty in with you. Yes, yes. I just thought I'd get this out. I hope the camera yeah. can see this and. Um, that okay. was our one and only um, album. Well, it was, it was called a mini album. It was quite funny because it's a it's the size of a thirty three, but it was played at, for some reason. It was like forty five revs per minute, so people would put it on and we'd be singing like that, you know, down. So, and then they realised it's on forty five. So do you think six ninety nine is a bit rich for that? Yeah. Or? So you, yeah, I well, I didn't really, I didn't get, I didn't have to pay for it. I, I got a free one there, but. Uh, Six dollars ninety nine. Suppose it, it nowadays it is quite love expensive. the back. Love the, yeah, love the yeah. vibe. All the boys, and 
interestingly, which I didn't know yep. uh, until I was reading it today, on the back there, it's got thank I've got my glasses on, but uh, thanks to Tim Count. Wow. And the road crew. So that's an interesting question Tim because I'm not quite sure. He maybe he lent us some keyboards. Oh, yeah, okay. Because Alf and um, so I can't think that any other reason. But that's the first time I've noticed it because we're working with Tim in the yes. his current legend yeah. band. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, I know you like your football. Uh, oh, I just look. thought I'd wear this little number in for you. Um, oh, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the team. No, team you go for and, and why. Wait. Well, um, well, I'm a Man U supporter, but and I don't sound. But my family come from Man Manchester. All Man U supporters don't come from Man U. No. They're all drop-ins. Oh, you know? Well, no, yes, but there's an interesting story because they, because of the 1957 aeroplane crash, we're all the Busby babes, because up until that era yeah. in the 50s, most players were a lot older. You know, yes. in their th nearly uh, 30s, late yeah. 20s, and these were youngsters. And a lot of them died in the plane crash, yep. so it became like a worldwide, absolutely, you know. And and the fan base just grew from there, and they always had that flair. Yeah, you don't want me to talking about all this, just like you know. But uh, being a Geordie, and well, you know, well. I can talk about our, you know, eight FA Cup wins. I mean, the last time we won anything was '55, but <laughs> yeah, 1955 that was. So. Gee, I not, don't think not yeah. in my lifetime. I don't right, think so. Gosh. We're we're great at taking. Um, Taking uh, defeat out of the jaws of victory, you might say. So. It's, a, it's a wonderful fan base up there. But, you know, very yes. proud. Yeah. You know. And look, you can ask me a question if you like. You can swing well, around. The tie. Tell me about the tie. I mean, apparently you, you sort of wear a different tie each interview, but not too worried about the shirts. Tell us something about <laughs> yourself, Richard, that oh. we don't already know. Come on. Um, oh, that's what, that's what, what I don't want. you already know? I wear a toupee. Do you really? Yeah, it's nice. Oh, it's I forgot to put it on. Sorry. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I thought that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get them like this now. Yeah. So is it true that uh, you only have one harmonica, therefore you can only play in one key? I mean, <laughs> I did, you know, I, it was just something I'd throw Ooh. out there because... No, you can't have one harmonica. Okay. You've got to have lots of harmonicas. You've got them all in a little box. Yeah, because of each key. So you can play in any key? If you've got all the harmonicas, yeah. Do you have all the harmonicas? No. Nope. I don't have a G sharp. I'll just, I'll just make <laughs> better of that. So for the next, um, <laughs> or an A flat, or an A flat. Yeah, isn't isn't that the same? I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Look, um, don't forget, uh, you know, um, to uh, bring in all your harmonicas next time. We I think it sounds like I'm going to need them. <laughs> You're going to spring something on me. I can tell. Yeah. Okay. Um, one final question. What um, what would you put on your gravestone? Is that a hard question? Uh, yeah, it is really. Um, You've got to ask them. Oh, you, you, everybody says, you know, I told you I was ill, but I mean, I'm a bit old to say that now. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think Spike Milligan put that on his. Um, he put, uh, was it? Um, I told you I was sick. Oh, I think <laughs> Spike Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Something, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So. Um, no, I can't really think of anything, you know, as a, a wonderful life or, you know, I was yeah. lucky to be here, you know. Yeah. But I won't be putting it on. <laughs> and being a musician, and it's just been a wonderful. Yeah, I've been very, very fortunate, um, and especially coming to Perth, I think it's a wonderful yeah. city to be doing it in. Yeah. And lots of very fine players. I mean, on every city's got wonderful players, and yeah, uh, yeah it's great. Look, um, wonderful to sit here and talk to you and, and chew the fat. Um, thank you very much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Really and, um, thank you for asking me. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, look, wonderful. And uh, look, I'll see you at rehearsal. Yes, for the pub legends. You'll be there. The uh, pub legends three will be on April 29th. Yep, Get at a quick the Charles Hotel. Yeah, and um, your part's always a very interesting one. <laughs> Arrangements <laughs> and keys. Yes, I know. I won't change the arrangement on you, Gary. <laughs> no. I promise. No, no worries. I'm having sleepless nights over this one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Look, um, thank you very much thank once you. again. And Thanks for look, asking me. Viewers, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to Procopy on Facebook. And, um, and we'll be back next week with another uh, special guest. Thank you very much.
with you around I wanna say that I found you on this lucky day Day you came my way Day that made me feel so good The day you came my way It was my lucky day Since I found you, I got to say, you're by my side, girl, we got it made. The day you came. 